What team are you from? Um, 8727. It's based out of Asheville, North Carolina. How's the robot doing? It's doing really good. We've had a couple minor issues throughout the day, but we've been able to fix them between matches. Okay. And so far, it's been going really well. We've been putting out the amount of points we want to, and we've been winning a lot of our matches. The intake looks like it just sort of feeds into aluminum rail here? Yeah, so we have an alum aluminum bar with belts pushing the ball on top. Okay. There's a bunch of compression, so the ball is just oh, carried upwards by the okay. belts. So yeah. these, aren't, these aren't just a drive. These yeah. are also contact with the ball. Yeah, so these are, have enough friction that the ball will be pulled up here, okay. catch, on, catch right here, and then get pulled up through the entire thing. Oh, I couldn't see. There's another one right yeah, here sorry. It's, it's in between. It's hidden behind that thing. Yeah, got it. Yeah, this belt pulls all the cargo up through, and there's another one right here that pulls it up into the shooter. Okay. Do you run those uh, separately so that you can, like, load and then launch? We do, yeah. So, we have... Do you want to explain that? Yeah, so we yeah. these all, like, this lower section all runs as one system, uh -huh. but in the upper section that feeds the shooter, it's two separate sections. Okay. And so we actually have little sensors that are kind of like most garage doors. You know how there's the little laser at the bottom that if there's something blocking it, it won't close? Yes. We actually have miniature versions of those in here. Okay. So when it brings the ball up, it'll break that little laser beam and it'll actually stop it in the right place. And so it can stop one up here and then run the bottom and bring a second one in. Can we see where those are? Um, yeah, so we have one right here, kind of at like where it transitions. Okay. And then the other one's right here. And so... And each of their receivers. Cool. Oh, so this is, that's what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. Is that a printed part? No, so these are actually, we just, these are bot units off of Adafruit. We've in the past tried to use time of flight distance sensors and just struggled with lots of noise and just inconsistencies. So this is just an on-off, it either works or it doesn't. Um, and it's been pretty good, except we've had some issues with getting rammed hard enough that things come unplugged, but right. if it's, that's the uh, only thing that can make them fail. Cool. We, and then we can also, that helps us, we can, uh, display whether or not there's balls there on the computer screen so we actually know how many balls we have in the robot. Okay. And then the LED strips, we can actually use that to uh, indicate if we have balls on the LED strips. Oh, so if yeah. there's a ball in there, it actually lights up and tells the driver. Yeah, and actually if we just wait so, for it to turn on, we can show you that. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'd like yeah, to see it. Yeah, so when I'm the driver, I'm looking all the way across the field. I can't tell if there's a ball in here, but this will all be a nice blue and I'll say, oh, there's a ball on the top. I just got to get one more. It's really nice. That's fantastic. Good luck. I was going to volunteer. And the intake will automatically come up. So it doesn't ram into stuff after I intake another ball. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. The, I, the LED strip actually being like a useful indicator yeah. is, is so fantastic. It's great. The one of our matches, our opponents realized that we have a shooter indication, uh -huh. and they were able to use that as a means to know when to defend us. Oh, so they yeah. Significantly more How many matches? Yeah. We but that's, so that's actually like not a good thing. If you're yeah. telling your opponents that you've yeah. got whoa. You right there and line up on the side. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we do have yeah. software to disable that now. It's yeah. Like coded into it so we can disable the shooter in the case. So we can fake teams up now if we're getting defended. Yeah, you could you could really play mind games if you yeah. light up the strip when there's no ball in there. I'm excited to do that sometime. I'll yeah. That. <laughs> the other cool thing about these LED lights, we have a couple other functions built into them. It tells us when we're shooting. So like I can see, I'll make sure the button is actually being pressed and I'm not just sitting there doing nothing. Uh -huh. We have a climber mode that looks purple. It means our climber is able to move. Okay. It also changes up the control scheme of the robot, so it's helpful to see. Yeah, And then also when we finish, Yeah. That's that's really cool. And we have one last function. There's a boost button, so we go extra fast. You'll get some nice RGB but you, lights you everywhere. You gotta have a boost button. Yep. Yeah. Of course. It just just dumps dumps nitrous into the engine, Wait. right? Are you like? Are the <laughs> don't wheels do anything. Clear? They're clear. You're running four omnis and yeah. and two uh, two high traction. Yeah. Are, are they all driven? Yeah, they are. So there's gearbox on the front. There's chains going on the inside. There's an axle here and then an axle here, and everything's driven. Okay. So these all move in sync. Cool. Well, they can't move right now because the robot's on. Right. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to do my hand in Yeah. So, yeah, we are boost by and you can see the... It's a pretty light. So, it's kind of fun. Party lights for the boost.
fun awesome. to drive around really fast. How does your climber run? So, your climber up there. Yeah. So in order to get the next bar, we have to do two things. Can you turn it off? Yeah. So I can go ahead. The first thing we have to do is actually get up to the first bar. So to do that, we have these two motors down here, which drive a chain, which is directly connected to this inside arm. Okay. So this inside arm will move up and down and help us get to the next rung. Once we do that, the arm will kind of slide into place over this hook right here. So I go click, and then we're good to get to the next one. Okay. In order to do that, this whole assembly can rotate. We have a gear motor off a gearbox down in there. So that has a very high torque. I believe there's about a 250 to 300 to one ratio from this gearbox to this uh, axle. Holy crap. Yeah. That's a, that's a significant mm -hmm. gearbox. Yeah. It runs through that chain right there? Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the purpose of the rubber band? The rubber band is actually, so because of the chain. I, was, I was kidding. I thought it was oh, just okay. there. That's oh, awesome. It, there's a real purpose yeah, for so it. <laughs> this, as you can see, there's a lot of wiggle. Yeah. Because there's just a little slop in the chain as things shift. Uh -huh. So the rubber bands, this will keep the climber steady and it'll disengage once we climb. So if you watch. These, these uh, little pieces right here are pulled down by the rubber band huh. and we'll keep it from wiggling. Once we oh. climb, yeah. Okay. Once we climb, you ready? Oh, but when you go up, it, it unlatches yeah. the mechanism. And it'll go right down and then it's out of the way and we just have to relatch it each time. That's really cool. Yeah. So, so you, you just do that once per map. Yeah. We only climb once from rats, so it just has to be a one-time thing. That's awesome. It's the easiest solution to that little I problem. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that helps our climb is these limit switches up here and down here. So that way, one, nothing breaks. We don't right. want a motor to just pull as hard as it can in the metal. Yeah, you don't want it like, yeah. like running out the end of a rail. Two, and two, the distances are perfect. So I can just pull down, hold it there, it'll sit right there, and I'll be able to get on or off the bar that I need to. Huh. It's perfect distance. And with the amount of torque, especially in this motor, it's very important to not have the motor just pulling and d destroying itself. Yeah. So you've got a sim headed into like a four-stage planetary? Yeah. Headed into... A three-stage out. Three Although stage. We, we have the ability to put a four-stage there with the mounting block. We just haven't. Okay. Man. Each of those are five to one stages. That's torquey. Yep. That's and really torquey. A 12-tooth 12, 12 gear into a 28-tooth gear. Cool. And then these are just 20 to one gearboxes. This doesn't have to be as powerful. It just has to be consistent. Right. Because it's the amount of torque you're dealing with in the rotating is so much more than the amount of torque for up and down. It actually surprises me. I, yeah. I would have thought that lifting the robot required more. Well, it, I mean, it ends up being about 60, 65 pounds on each uh, chain. Okay. And But on this, the amount of torque we're dealing with with just this, the, each of these arms, this weighs about 25 pounds. Okay. And at its longest, it's about 55, 60 inches. So you end up with a whole lot of torque, I think, like for, I can't do the math in my head, but it's a whole lot of torque. Yeah. <laughs> so to the point where the 2,000, 3,000 pound braking strength in the chain is very important because we will break any lesser chain like this. I, I didn't even notice the first time. Those are two very different sizes of chain. Yeah. <laughs> this one has a braking strength of about 400 pounds, I believe. Okay. And this one has a braking strength of about two and a half thousand pounds. That's uh, considerably more. Yeah. The other cool thing about a robot is the shooter. Okay. We started out the season with a simple design. The ball goes out this way. Okay. It's forced out by a bar that used to go here. We go into the low hub or the high hub, depending on what we wanted to do. It worked well. But this last week, I figured out by removing the top two bars and putting a rolly bar here, we're able to shoot the other direction. And our arc in the other direction is actually much better. Really? So between our last two competitions, we now shoot opposite directions. <laughs> and That's that has to be a pain to adapt to as a driver. It actually wasn't too bad. Just, I had Ben yell at me once or twice. Yeah, more or less, <laughs> we partially disassembled our shooter, cut a hole in the climber, and now our robot. Oh, yeah. A lot of things have to work right. <laughs> the ball will, there's a little, if you want to come under the side. Yeah. There's a little notch right here. This used to be just one solid bar. Okay. In order for this ball to go into the hub, it has to not hit something. It, it was hitting right here every once in a while. Okay. So we had to cut a little piece oh, away right you there. Oh, you were shooting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, so we had to fix that. I mean, just removing the part that you're hitting is yep. like, you know. Ideally, we would have done something nicer, but this looks cool and it was quick. Absolutely. And it's an excuse to put more tape on the robot. Yep, and it looks quite cool, yeah. Yeah. And the best part about this new arc isn't just that it's a better arc, it's that we can now shoot lined up directly with the hub. Okay. So one of the sacrifices that we made on our robot in our season because we're a rookie team is that we, we don't have main automatic aiming, we don't have a turret, we don't have a hood, we don't have uh -huh. a limelight. So we have to do our, all of our aim, aiming manually. As a driver, that sucks. 
Right. But so now instead of having to aim ourselves 20 feet or 20 inches away if we want to do the high goal, we can just run up against it and this arc is perfect and it goes straight in. Huh. And we have a very, very high consistency rate of Wait, so shots. you're you're shooting high goal from right the, next to it. From right next to yeah. it. So you're just sort of going up. It's very uh yeah, that style of art. Amazing. I don't think I've seen anybody do it. Yeah, that I don't think up. yeah. I'm very glad we were able to do it because we have been much more consistent with that arc than we were in our last competition with our old arc that went that way. I really, All right. I really love that latch. It's so simple. Yeah, it's great. Now we do need a cue somewhat soon. Oh, okay. I can let you guys go right. and cue then. Thank you. Good luck out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. This was an excellent rundown.